Hello, today is the uh, 7th of March, uh, 2012. Uh, thus far, my uh, channel's uh, design has not been switched over. So, uh, knock on wood, let's uh, hope it stays the same way. Because quite frankly, I'm not a fan of the new design. Within this video, a very quick look at this silver chart and uh, then move it in towards uh, money creation. There'll be more within the charts, uh, most likely on Friday. So within this move, this is the uh, six hour or quarter day chart. There was one candle that brought the movement from down, a pretty decent size move and obviously a second leg lower. If we take the length of the move, and we'll make it a little bit wider because we're going to need the space, and we'll move this down from the area where it broke down from, we can see that it was close to the same size move of the first one, but took a lot more time than it originally has done so. Now, since this point, it's still uh, below this... Uh, this average here, which is the 18 period of lows, but the significant part is where its current strength is, which is merely how much it has retraced, which is at 20.6, which means it's nearing the 23.6% mark, and uh, that's a significant level. If, of course, it can confirm that it's going to take this out, your next target level is within here. On any retracements, it's a 61.8% level from wherever this high is and this low. If it does hold this level, manages to come back, and then the significant point is always holding 61.8% on the next uh, level. So if it makes a, uh, another top at that level, if it comes back down here, that's fine, and... Uh, really establish a pattern of the higher lows and then breaking above it that's when you would expect to get to the next levels if of course it uh, fails to do so when we break down this level especially by not coming up to here then uh, that should mean that there's a good chance of another leg towards the downside and of course these will be the significant two Fibonacci resistance levels if the market can further its uh, gain so that'll be it for the charts and uh, now let's go on to uh, some stuff about money. And uh, well, due to copyright reasons, the author, myself, will not show screenshots from a recent BMO, which is Bank of Montreal, commercial that can be found on the YouTube search, uh, Money Tree Commercial BMO Bank. In this commercial, they display the question, do your kids know where money comes from? Their webpage Smart Steps for Parents in the Fundamentals tab says to start with the basics and giving them answers for where money comes from and what it is used for. Now, quite frankly, the basics, I, I feel personally, and this is personal opinion, that it has not been taught because, for if you knew the basics, it would be kind of irritating, kind of, well, sick maybe. Money definition from freedictionary.com. A medium that can be exchanged for goods and service and is used as a measure of their values on the market, including among its forms a commodity such as gold, an officially issued coin or note, or a deposit in a checking account, or other readily liquefiable account. It's interesting how they have gold at the start, but... See, if, if gold was the money and you wanted to tell them where money came from, you'd really have to go scientific. And you'd have to mention things like the periodic table of elements and why gold is important within it and how humans are able to mine this metal and what this metal is good for. Those would be the significant points, but that's not really what we're doing. We're usually using the notes and such. So let's just go through a few uh, math examples here. Let's assume that Central Bank loans $5,000 to Trust A and B and $10,000 to Trust C, and their rates are 5% interest. And then Trust A lends the entire amount at 10%, and you can see below 8 and 12%. And let's also assume, it's not written on here, but let's assume that interest is only paid if it's not paid within the year. So if at the end of the year, 
the interest is hit right then and there. Any money owing, the interest is charged. So if you pay 11 months afterwards, no interest on what you pay. All right, let's continue on. After one year, trust A had 250 paid back, B had 500 paid back, and C also 500. All trust companies pay back the central bank with uh, what they have. What are the figures after year one? And well, down below, trust A would have had 4,750, and they would have got 10 percent because they already had 250 paid back. So interest revenue was 475, and you can see the same sort of examples with trust B and C. Now the central bank. They had 18750 because what we're also going to assume is whenever a trust gets paid back, they just pay it right back to the central bank. So therefore, they, they got twelve fifty. so that twelve fifty was paid back, which is why that's at eighteen seven fifty. They're charging 5%. So on the balance sheets, trust A, their accounts receivable is fifty two twenty five, and that's just by taking the, uh, the revenue and the uh, accounts receivable together. And the accounts payable is what they owe the central banker. So we got the same thing for all three. Now for the central bank, they, uh, they have 19687 and a half that is uh, owed to them. And their cash, well, they received 1250 back from the uh, trust companies. And, well, if we take the 19, uh, or if we, excuse me, if we take the uh, numbers of the uh, 20,000, that they received, well, it all works out that they're up 937.50 from their starting 20,000. And the people, well, they would hold 18,750 18, because they've given back, of course, the, uh, the 1250. So collectively, all the people have 18,750. Now they owe 20,720, excuse me, 25, which is the amount that the, uh, the people owed all the trust combined. Let's do one final year. So the next year, trust A lends out another 1,500, B lends out another 1,000, C lends out another 1,000 as well, trust A gets 500 back, B gets 700 back, and C gets 300 back. It works out that trust A is profiting 560. They never have cash because they always pay it back and they don't create money out of thin air. Trust B, uh, they have zero, same thing for trust B and C. And you can see that the higher the interest rates, the uh, more they're making it seems. Now trust C was more aggressive in the figures to start off because they had double the variables. But even if you take 1500 and a half, that's 750. And then the central bankers, they have the cash because whatever is paid back by the bankers, well, that's twenty-seven fifty, And their accounts receivable, that's what's uh, owed from the uh, trust companies. And they don't owe anybody anything. And Well, they're the ones that also create out of thin air. And their total equity is uh, 2021 Now, the people now have 20750 circulating throughout everywhere. And the accounts receivable, well, they, no one borrows money from them. And uh, the accounts payable is the sum of the accounts receivables for all three trust companies. And they are, they're also not allowed to create it of thin air, but they get a negative uh, value of minus 4371. Now, if you want to get in detail, uh, the trust companies could also go into negative values as well. Because, quite frankly, the simplistic form of this is... Uh, the interest rate and monopoly of currencies ensure it so that uh, debt is guaranteed 100%. And there is the basics. Uh, take care.